In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Welcome to our new episode on Pentecost. Today we will reflect on the power of the resurrection. What was the power of the resurrection which gave them strength? The Lord Jesus Christ's resurrection from among the dead was the greatest event that shook the Jewish entity. By all means, they tried to resist it, saying, this last deviation from the truth will be more powerful than the first strain. They meant preaching the gospel. Then, what was the power of the resurrection and what were its effects? One, Christ came out of the tomb while it was closed. This miraculous performance was not something strange for Jesus as he had come out of St. Mary's womb while she remained a virgin. Also, during his appearances to his disciples after the resurrection, while they were gathering together in the attic, he came and stood among them when the doors were shut. Two, one of the signs which prove the resurrection's power is that Christ rose by himself and not by others' help. And all those who rose before him were raised by others' help. Elijah the prophet raised the son of the widow of Zarephath. Elisha the prophet raised the son of the Shenemat. And the Lord Jesus Christ raised the daughter of Jairus, the son of Nain's widow and Nazareth. But he rose by himself because the energy and the power of the resurrection were in him. It was impossible for death to keep him under its control because in him was life. And three, the Lord Jesus Christ rose in spite of the stressed guardship, the strong guards, the seals and the big stone at the entrance of the tomb. The worldly power used its utmost energy, but Christ was stronger than that. The resurrection proved that it was more powerful than all the obstacles. It was a victory against all Christ's opponents and adversaries, a triumph over death, over Hades, over the tomb, over the big stone, over the seals, over the strips of linen that were wrapped around his body. Thus, when St. Paul knew him, he said, I am now him and the power of his resurrection. Paul knew the power of Christ's resurrection when he saw him after the resurrection. The Bible says, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Thus, this apostle became sure of Jesus' powerful resurrection and could share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. St. John the Beloved, one experienced the same power when Jesus appeared to him. His countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Inside the tomb, Christ's power was greater than any power outside. On Sunday at dawn, he left the tomb in a moment not known by anyone. The stone was in its place till the angel came and rolled it to announce the resurrection which was accomplished. So the woman could see the empty tomb. For the aspects of his power after the resurrection. There are some sides of the power which men witnessed on earth. In addition to the powerful numerous appearances, the power of his ascension to heaven and sitting on the right hand of God, the power of entering the attic with the doors closed and the power of changing the disciples from weak, terrified persons into brave heroes who could preach the gospel with all ability and without any objection. As his resurrection was powerful, so there was another power which preceded that resurrection. Five. His power between the time of his death and that of his resurrection. After his death, it was his own power with which he could open the gates of Hades and go to preach to the spirits in prison. With this power, he could descend to the lower earthly regions and lead captives in his train and give gifts of redemption to men. Then, after the resurrection, he could ascend higher than all heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Number six, by his resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ proved that he was more powerful than death and that his death and his silence during the judgment were not due to any point of weakness in him. If he had spoken, he would have 
dumbfounded and convinced his audience. But this was not his aim. His aim was to redeem us. So when they asked him to come down from the cross, he did not respond to them, although he was able to come down. His only aim was to suffer pain and die on behalf of us and pay the price of sin. Return and redemption for us. The resurrection proved that Christ's silence was not weakness. The power of the resurrection was the strongest reply to those who charged him with weakness or those who thought that his crucifixion was a sign of his disability. By the resurrection, it was proved that Christ's silence had eminent aims. He kept silent because he wished to give himself for us. If he had defended himself, he would have won the case without any doubt. Many a time he answered the chiefs and the elders and the priests of the Jews, and they gave no reply. Moreover, they witnessed the power of his words when he was 12 years old. Even his audience certified that he spoke as one who had authority. Christ's silence during his judgments was a proof that he died by his own will. He said about himself, I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. He laid it down at the time of crucifixion and took it up at the time of resurrection. Jesus has given up the spirit with love and self sacrifice, not because of weakness and disability, and as he rose in power, he died in power as well. When he breathed the last, he cried out with a loud voice while the body was completely exhausted. His water and his blood were drained. Flogging, walking, beating, bleeding and hanging on the cross made him powerless. His body died, but his divine spirit remained alive with death. During his death, he could give good news to those who slept on hope. Also, he could open the closed gates of paradise and let it in the robber be with Adam, his descendants and the saints of the past ages. He could also rise and his resurrection mocked at the guards, the seals and the big stone at the entrance of the tomb. It did not happen in the history of humanity that anyone other than Christ could overcome death by his own authority or rose up by his own will or went out of the tomb with an entrance closed by a huge stone and guarded with fully armed soldiers. Number seven, the power of Christ's resurrection smashed the chief priests of the Jews as well as all the Sadducees. It proved their crime of his judgment and his crucifixion. It proved that all their past pretenses were false. So by the resurrection, they became blamable before the nation. When the disciples proclaimed the resurrection in every connection, the chief priest said to them, Did we not strikingly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. The power of resurrection terrified the chiefs of the Jews because it showed his righteousness. If he had been culpable, he would not have been able to rise from among the dead. As the resurrection was a proof of his righteousness, the resurrection at the same time proved the injustice of those chiefs and their trembling up charges against him. Those chiefs uh, who had rejoiced, thinking that they had got rid of him by killing him. The speech about his appearance after he had been killed terrified them. The holy saints did not stop blaming them for this point itself. So St. Peter the Apostle said to them, after the miracle of healing the crippled beggar, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. 
and kill the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. Number eight, the Sadducees in general do not believe in the resurrection. So Christ's resurrection was a dangerous practical proof against the perceiving of the creed and instructions. Thus, with all their power, they resisted the resurrection and opposed the disciples when they announced it. So the Bible says, when the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the power of the resurrection was stronger than their resistance. Indeed, his resurrection from death was more powerful than his coming down the cross. Moreover, his resurrection proved that he died by his own will and not by force, especially because he himself rose without others' help, by himself came out of the closed and sealed tomb, as he came out of St. Mary's womb with her virginity sealed. Indeed, as he said about himself, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. Number nine, the resurrection proved that he was more powerful than death. So he was stronger than all human powers which kill and put to death. He was more powerful than the injustice of the evildoers, more powerful than their conspiracies and their authority. They did all that they could do till they persecuted him and fastened him with nails on the cross. They defied him and mocked at him. They thought they triumphed over him, especially because Christ remained silent all the time of his judgment and challenging him. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a snee sheep before its shearers in silence. His resurrection proved that his death was a self-sacrifice and not by force. Trusting his resurrection meant believing in his love, in his self-sacrifice and redeeming humanity. It meant trusting his power, his past words about himself and his relationship with God. This is the power of the one who died by body and remained alive by his divinity. It is the power of that one who said to John in the Revelation, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead and behind. I am alive forevermore, amen and I have the keys of Hades and death. That powerful one whom God raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Well, that's the end of our show for today. We hope to see you in our next episodes on Pentecost.